Hey guys. Wow, it's been a while since I've made a video. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all my new subscribers and welcome to the inner gaze. Thank you for my returning subscribers. Um, it's been maybe about a month or two since I made a video and a lot has happened in that month or two. <laughs> How are you guys all feeling? It's been um, definitely another next level as far as energetic transits that have been happening um, pretty much ever since the equinox, September. Um, there have been a lot of new levels, new information, new downloads to integrate, um, pretty consistent energy waves coming in. I don't know if, if you're sensitive to energy um, in the way that I am. I have had a couple of restless nights tossing and turning, what feels like anxiety coming from my chest, but it's more of like an energetic anxiety. Like, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's not like connected to a fear of any kind. It's, it just feels literally like I'm being operated on in the middle of the night <laughs> energetically to my heart chakra. And what's happening is, um, and even if you're not feeling this, don't worry. It's, it, it has a lot to do more with your sensitivity and your level of awareness of your clairs, um, which everyone has innate, um, dormant clair, uh, skills, I guess. Like some people are more clairvoyant, so they're visual. Some people are more clairsentient, so they feel. I'm more clairsentient. I feel. I don't have really great visuals. Some people are clairaudient, meaning they can hear. Um, some people are claircognizant. Either way, wherever you are, just know that you are developing into these gifts and that they will come. And everyone is different. Everyone's path is different. So for me, it's clairsentience, which is my strongest clair at the moment. And, um, yeah, so these downloads that are happening are like very, very intense. Um, and what's happening is, is as each wave comes, right, we've got almost like a procession of waves, incoming light that is being thrust upon the planet. And we've got these major full moons, like this full moon that just happened two days ago is the full moon in Gemini. It's at zero degrees. I'm not an astrology person. I do not claim to be one, but apparently zero degrees is like a mega, mega, like hit that shit. You gotta go outside and hit the, hit the full moon because it is a very, very good time for manifestation and a very, very good time to release everything you're still carrying. So what has come up for me is a lot. So every single wave that's coming through, what that is doing, it is opening your heart chakra, opening, opening, opening. And if you think that it's been open, it has more opening to do. We can always be more opener, right? And through each opening, what's happening is all of our fears and our limitations, our limited beliefs, our feel, fears of unworthiness are coming up to the surface to be released. Which means if you are in an awakening path, you are gonna be confronted with those exact challenges, right? That are gonna to start to rise, bring up, awaken all of those core wounds and sensitivities that you've been holding on to that have been keeping you stuck. Um, and the truth is we haven't truly been stuck. It's almost like, um, the way that the transits and the, you know, the astrology and these incoming energy waves and the solstice and these dates and these key numbers are all working. It's kind of like a Rube Goldberg machine, if you can think about it that way. It's almost like, I don't know if you guys know what that is, where it's like a, a domino thing where one domino then sets off a course of other dominoes, which then sets off more. And it is all a progression. And it, it has to do with the decisions that we're making and the choices that we're making in our lives of course, but it's like one of these things then leads to another. So every step is pushing us forward. So if you do feel stuck, just know in your mind, all you have to do is choose yourself, make a new choice, and you'll see that the dominoes start to fall down. And then now you realize you're in this Rube Goldberg machine. So one thing leads to another. And what I've found in the last, I don't know, three weeks, is that um, I'm starting to live in the Rube Goldberg machine as opposed to projecting my hopes of where this Rube Goldberg machine ends up. 
Um, and what that means in other terms is that I'm finding myself on my path, watching things unfold, as opposed to projecting all my heart's desires, wants, and expectations on a future that I feel in my heart is coming to fruition, um, which can be very stressful. And anything that is in your way of keeping you on your path and living as the Rube Goldberg machine, you know, rolling ball, um, anything that is keeping you from just experiencing your path will come up to the surface to be met with you so that you can conquer your fear, uproot the wound, and keep going, okay? So let's see if I can say this in another way. How we live our lives generally, um, we have stress and worry, and we have fear and doubt. When we are stressed and we are worried, we are worried about a future outcome that we are hoping for, um, unsure of, uncertain of, and if we are uncertain of our future, that keeps us in fear, which is a low vibration, which means that whatever we have created or manifested for our future cannot be met with us because we are literally not vibrating at the same frequency from our heart's desires. Um, and what keeps us at a lower resonance is usually obsessive thinking, um, obsessive analysis, obsessive worry, because we are projecting into the future, okay? So there is no time, there is no future, and there also is no past, there is only now. So the more that we are focused in the past and what's happened, like maybe you had someone that you really cared about, they're no longer in your life, you keep going over and over, what did I do wrong, what did I do wrong, how did this friendship end, how did this relationship end, you are living in the past. You cannot be at your highest vibration or on your highest timeline when your thoughts are continuously projected into a fictitious place that does not exist anymore. So what spirit wants us to do is be the ball. We want to be the thing that is rolling and continuing and experiencing the Rube Goldberg machine, which is a series of fun events that are lined up for us one after another. Um, and honestly, it does keep getting more fun the longer you're on this journey because there are less obstacles towards the end, it seems. I'm hoping <laughs> there are less obstacles that are going to come up. Um, but each obstacle is there for a reason. It's all love. It's meant to teach you something. Um, so if you're, if you're still in the place of witnessing each obstacle in your life as a as you know from the victim standpoint like this happened to me like this person keeps annoying me like how how do I keep you know attracting these awful people into my life I'm being lied to I'm being tossed around whatever um, you are not being the ball you you are literally letting everything happen to you and you're just like the victim like the ball knows where it's going the ball is not afraid to roll, you know? Um, you have to take control of your life. And when I say control of your life, I mean realize, I mean it's literally shifting perspective from things are just happening to me and life is just crazy um, and life is out to get me to I have very, very consciously before incarnation decided what my life path was going to be. And that doesn't mean you've determined all the ins and outs and the ways of getting there and the surprises and delights that have come along the way. It just means that energetically, you have constructed a video game, a program that has certain challenges and obstacles at each level. And you are actually being presented with the exact right frequency and human beings to match you up to those exact obstacles so that you can overcome them, uproot whatever's inside of you that you're carrying, because we were born with these energetic deficiencies. I don't know what else you would call it. It's almost like we're born with certain patterns that are ingrained in our society. And it's not just you. It's like your bloodline, it's your family, it's your ancestors, okay? You are literally carrying the wounds of our civilized human existence, pre-civilization, in this body. I mean, energetically, you are carrying the wounds of our people. 
and certain people are caring more than others. So that means you have to go through those experiences to uproot them so that ultimately you can overcome them and teach others how to do it. I mean, yeah, it's a pyramid scheme, maybe, <laughs> but ultimately we are humanity. We're all trying to help each other help ourselves. We're not one for ourselves and that's it. I mean, that's not how life is supposed to be. Anyway, I forgot what I was saying. So you, as you get to each challenge, right, you are being confronted with your wound and every obstacle that you meet, you have to thank, be thankful for, because you created this. Um, you created this for each other. Um, we are basically in a video game. Like, I am my player one. I This vessel is in the video game that I created. Um, I have very, very specific things, wounds, uh, burdens that I am unbinding, that I am unwrapping. It's part of my wounds, and many people will have this too, is this feeling of unworthiness, is not accepting myself, um, feeling like I'm not gonna get chosen, feeling I'm not gonna be worthy of true love. Um, and when the truth is we are love, and that's just what we've forgotten. We, we are love, and we create our reality. So we bring everything to us, because at our highest vibration, we are unstoppable. But yet I still carry a lot of abandonment wound and, and rejection. And I've had a series of unfortunate events in my love life that include a lot of rejection. And it's not that I feel victimized by that. I feel empowered by it because I understand where that comes from. And it's way, way deeper than just Allie the girl who grew up on Long Island and you know works in a media job like this is way way deeper this feeling of abandonment stems from like our original separation from from source energy our original separation from the divine feminine energy within and it is it stems from eons of war where the masculines have left the feminines behind and had to care for the family and there is fear of death like this abandonment wound does not come from a series of like bad boyfriends like in the, when I was 20 you know so like you have to realize that these these wounds are mega because we're they're the collective wounds so every obstacle you hit if it is triggering something in you that means it's not them, it's you. There's something in you, acknowledge that. Thank that human being, person, car, whatever it is that struck you. Um, not, not a car should strike you, you know, struck you with anxiety or pangs of whatever, resentment, anger, frustration. Thank them for that feeling. Witness it, ask yourself, what is triggering this in me? Where does it come from? Try to trace it back. Try to trace it back. Because we have these patterns of correcting. We have these patterns, it's like we're at war. Like, for instance, there's a wound where, you know, let me just, I'll talk about my wound for, just so maybe it'll resonate with you from your perspective. But let's say I had a habit, because I feel unworthy at the core of love, because for some reason I've rejected myself. I've and therefore, because I've rejected myself, I've attracted a series of individuals who are not interested in me, or I'm very attracted to people who aren't <laughs> interested in me and that they keep coming at me. But it's like, once I've recognized what I do because of that, so like, in order to feel worthy, I'm a doer. So like, I will try to, you know, be extremely um, irreplaceable by like doing very generous things for people or trying to help them solve their problems. And like, I know it comes from a place of, of, of like genuine generosity. It comes from a good place. But what I'm doing is I'm giving my energy of myself in hopes of retaliating feelings so that I can resolve this worthiness issue with someone else feeling like they need me. And it's so subconscious. It's not like I'm doing it on purpose. It's like my go-to reaction. And some people do it with emotions. Some people learn how to be empathetic or, or give themselves emotionally. Some people are actually giving their energy unconsciously. A lot of empaths do that. 
to resolve and temper the situations around them so that they don't have a blow up moment. Like we do all of these things in this almost like inefficient way where we're giving our energy towards things in hopes of expecting something else to resolve something that's really truly within and it's based on a belief that can be totally eradicated if you know if you're aware of it but that's the thing we are now being allowed to witness and see our lives from a higher consciousness perspective which means we are now then allowed and to be aware of the wounds we're carrying that are preventing us from living our full heart-centered in the now be the ball lives okay everything that keeps us projected into the future or stagnant in the past is keeping us from being the ball from rolling from really rolling and then creating and manifesting our truest desires okay so what these energies are doing that was a long-winded ex explanation of what's really happening is it's teaching us to live from a heart-centered place meaning this is the brain okay this heart your heart chakra which is right here or your higher heart chakra the sacred heart is the brain it is what tells us what to do it's it's the beat it's the intuition okay it's the divine mother it's the divine feminine it is it is your knowing you should use this as a gauge because this will just screw you up. The ego has, the ego is just a pain in the ass right now. The ego is, is there to get you to analyze and feel sort of like fear um, when you really shouldn't feel fear. Like there's nothing human beings, well, I mean, I shouldn't say there's nothing human beings need to fear anymore. Of course, if anything, we should fear each other. But it's not like we are, you know, man versus wild and like we got bears to fear, you know? Um, we've actually almost pretty much conquered a lot of disease too and famine to an extent. Like if you consider what we are at now versus what we were hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, we have developed an ego, which basically is now just functioning as a really annoying mom. <laughs> in a way it's like it's telling you oh you shouldn't trust that person because they're gonna screw you over and you know like oh you're probably not worthy of this thing you know like oh you want that it's gonna be hard you're probably gonna get really like you're you're gonna be let down you know what you should put a big big wall around your heart because like you're gonna be you're gonna be fucked over you know that you're gonna be fucked over so hard yeah you should probably not trust that person Oh, that person likes you but they probably not mm. like that's what your ego is that's sorry my face was gross when that happened because it is I mean this is just the part of your brain that you should learn how to shut up <laughs> say shut up shut up shut up to your ego when it's literally just giving you thoughts that are uh, for entertainment purposes I guess but they're really not helpful anymore so live from your heart Trust your instincts, trust your intuition, trust what your heart is saying. Does this feel good? Does this feel like it's in alignment with what I desire? Does it make me feel joy? Does it make me want to keep rolling? And as you start to be the ball more than being the end of the Rube Goldberg machine or the beginning of the Rube Goldberg machine, you start to chip away until you just are the ball and then everything rolling in your in your path is literally coming to you and is surprising and delighting you and you're enjoying it and that's when your optimum manifestation skills are present because you are fully present you are in your bliss you're in awe your wonder you are literally being guided by your higher self so you're connected to source and you're connected to everything that's happening in the moment and that's what you want to do you want to be the ball you want to flow you want to flow just like water just like being the water in the river and sometimes it's okay to not know where it's going I think a lot of feminines have this and maybe masculines do too but like this urge to project into the future what does this mean um, if this person likes me you know are they dateable or are we gonna be married like I don't know that's a very extreme example 
But a lot of feminines want to know, like, what's the purpose of this? Where is this going? Where sometimes it's just, it is. It just is. It is right now. If it feels good right now, do it now. And open yourself up to love. Open yourself love to, up to abundance of all kinds. With your heart open, you'll be attracting the experiences that you need in any given moment. And there's no good or bad. There's no good or bad. There's just experiences. I mean, every experience is literally, it's an experience. Every learning is valid. Every single one. Because this is a place of, of insanity. This world is not easy. It is not easy to be a human being in this world. And some human beings have it easier than others. But at the same time, if we're reincarnating, we're coming back here over and over again to learn from every single angle so that our soul can evolve and grow. And that includes, it's not limited to every kind of life, every kind of loss, every kind of pain. Because this is the only place we can experience pain even. Like, actually, I think I just heard somewhere that pain and orgasm lights up the same energetic, the same center in the brain, which is really interesting. So anyway, I mean, I think What's happening right now is that we are learning step by step to be the ball, to accept, to be fully accepting of our present life circumstance, where we're at. We are allowing ourselves to not project too forward into the future about where we're going. And we're being reminded to keep your head out of the past because what, what's happened before can be erased. Timelines are merging, like all of our timelines are merging, all of our past lives. What we're experiencing right now could be a result of something that we had in a concurrent past life coming up to the surface to be cleared. And we just have to allow it. It's like, if this is coming up, just know it's coming up so you can witness it, feel it, transmute it, and clear it. If you have excess energy coming up or excess emotion, go outside. I know it's winter right now, but I got my ass to a tree the other day. And I sat on a stump and I imagined golden light sh coming down from source through the, my crown chakra and I imagined shooting out of my butt another ray of light. And I asked Gaia to take my pain, take my fear, take my doubt and transmute it into love and light for the collective. And trust me, the energy passes. It's just energy. You don't have to worry about it. It's not yours. You don't have to go around saying, I'm depressed, I'm anxious, I'm this. Don't give yourself I am statements. Just say, this is energy, it is passing. I can actually transmute this. And I will get past this because I am a divine sovereign being. And I am in control of this video game that I'm literally living right now. I can be the ball. So, Everyone here is, is in different stages of their awakening and they might be in the process of seeing the connectedness of all things, seeing synchronicities, receiving downloads for the first time. If you are and if you're coming up with ideas and they feel true to you and they hit you in the heart, that is your truth. That is something you should write down. <laughs> And that is something you should share with others because everyone here has a phenomenal wealth of truth that we are tapped into at any given time. We are just w remembering it, you know? We're just remembering. And as we remember how it is to live from the heart, how it is to live from the moment, how it is to be the master manifestors, the high priestess, the empresses and the emperors that we are, we need to share that with each other because we're learning how to be evolved humans, okay? And then from there, change. I don't know how long that's gonna take, if it's gonna be 100 years, if it's gonna be tomorrow. I hope it's tomorrow, but you know what? It doesn't matter, because what's here is what's perfect. It's meant for you in this moment. It is taking you exactly where you need to go. You are exactly where you need to be, and honor yourself. If you are being called to rest, sleep, if you can. If you are being called to relax, take a bath, take a salt bath. If you are feeling energy, go outside, get your feet on the ground and try to ground that shit. I am sorry I am cursing so much in this video. It's been a little bit. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna try to do more because I'm like feeling good about videos today. So maybe I'll change my outfit so it seems like I'm doing a different day. But um, 
I appreciate it. If you guys have had any new experiences, please share them in the comments. Um, and I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.